after yesterday's talking, I made some uh, changes and uh, modified. I hope that makes sense and uh, put everyone together, thinking what we have to uh, think ahead. And uh, we will make this uh, PowerPoint available on the website. So, and also I made a web page for all the bookmarks that the, the vocabularies I mentioned. Uh, the types of them, so you can see this uh, through s several pages to find any vocabulary you deep inside of that. Uh, in general, <coughs> what I want to bring first is why we talk about this. Then, only focus on the potentials of the uh, group. Previously, I have all the for the individual vocabulary thing, but I think we will not talk about that today. So let's think of by this way. Not only just say possible, but what actual situation, and do we need to do that? So think through this uh, three uh, point of view. So why I'm talking about this, and uh, we have Karen and uh, up here, we had that uh, first uh, webinar that you mentioned that how in the conservation area, a lot of standalone databases exist. And also the reference to certain databases are also could be small and diverse and could be different. And that also tie with the survey we just saw. We have all the choices published or in-house or no control or some others, but what are the published? They want to check what are the published uh, vocabularies in that survey. So we have listed the general vocabularies. Uh, we also see the, just for architecture and for book paper photographs, there are surprisingly so many of them. So it's, uh, the situation is it's already very diverse and there are so many vocabularies for the people who are using the published vocabulary. We're not talking about those who use internal or non-controlled yet. So my consideration of her approach, first is the two different. First, can we start from an existing one? And what are the options? So I'm going to explain those situations uh, with the examples. It's not say we should do this or should do that. It's just open up, say, oh, there's this way or there other way in other field, what people are doing. Uh, so starting from an existing vocabulary, the first methodology is you derive a new vocabulary. So do we need that you derive a new vocabulary? We know that John mentioned yesterday, AAT has different languages. We know the way that small has different, so many countries use that. But they don't have to be exactly the same. Some of them have their localized part, like our Spanish one. The, and the Dewey Decimal has for the locals, you don't even need to be translated by all other languages, right? Do we want to do this way? Which vocabulary we're going to take a look? So just keep thinking. This is the first, a uh, uh, lot of places do starting with this way. There you could this thing one and translate, uh, or I make a little bit different. So if it's not detailed enough, yesterday we had a discussion about whether AAT has enough for the conservation. If not enough, what kind of options? There is always this kind of local needs uh, question. So there are three options that you can make. Uh, I will explain one by one, and using all my uh, graphics to have some impression. So first thing is leaf node. The leaf node is that you have a wetland. Then there is a whole classification about the wetland. Why I have to redevelop, I don't. So I point that to that specific leaf nodes. 
This is uh, already used by other vocabularies. For example, in NASA thesaurus, you don't have to put all the aircraft types because you have a separate list of them. And that can update it. Whenever you need that, you leave notes, point to the whole branches. Right? So that's one of the uh, if notes idea. Then there's another one that we really need to think seriously. It's so-called uh, satellite vocabulary. Satellite require you have a super superhero in the middle. Then everyone else is, is satellite. It's coordinated. It's top down because we find the superstructure is not enough or not perfect. So we develop satellite around that. However, it has to be consistent. And so this is the, the fish. Uh, we know that very, very good, and we will probably will use that in some of our work. But there are so many different uh, particular ones. And each of them is this independent uh, thesaurus, how they are connected together. They're connected through so-called class or categories instead of top or narrow, this kind of way. But this way, they all uh, can be extended. Uh, so it's, a, it's a kind of like a settlement. And we also know that our <coughs> well-known Library of Congress subject had is, have developed one for particular use. For example, most recent are for the general form uh, thesaurus. And there are others for eating, for, for the, uh, for example, a long time ago for the legislative, uh, for the graphic uh, usage, because there are different needs. However, they are not independent. They are, are surround that superhero. So now we need to think, do we have such a superstructure? Should we develop or pull others into this kind of, this require coordinating, this mostly touch down the, the, the superstructure need to coordinate all of this. And you, the same term occurring in other places will be reflected. So this gives us one uh, option. So there, this is about satellite, okay? Then the next one is so-called um, open umbrella structure. This started to become very popular in small projects because you need your, the ontologies are very specifically uh, designed for your local usage. But you don't want to repeat. Everyone already know how to describe a person, how to describe a event or how to describe a uh, particular place. Why do we need to redefine it everything? No, we use upper ontology. So upper ontology has the three things, core, central, and domain ontology. And in the uh, long time ago, before we even have all those PCs, we started see the development of uh, upper ontology, million dollar project, then they have been used by corporate board. So this one say you don't need to define what is event, because I define that. Yeah. So this upper, but the only upper is discipline independent. I'm not talking about any discipline. But um, the Another one that I used is a sumo, also uh, become very popular now. It's the largest open, kind of like the open formal ontology. So for our question in our group, do we have such a core ontology or upper ontology? Let's see. Um, later you will talk about the CDAS here in, in detail. So CRCRN were referred by the Wikipedia say it has its own upper ontology. So it has defined its own upper already. And 
will that be useful? But you can see how many projects that match to C.R.A. And this is by category, say, what about the archaeology? You can see the conservation, the green ones related to conservation. So they have been uh, developed to match the upper uh, C.R.M. And some of them, in the middle part of that, if those projects match the uh, entities, mostly, how say entity, and it's not enough, I extend, I extend, I extend. But also, they started to match the cataloging rules, like the EAD or Dublin Core, so they have that. Uh, so, so the project's already available. So if we want to see, we will see what kind of role here CRM is in our group. And um, we will later have another presentation about this background thesaurus. Uh, and that's the details, and this is that. We will have that presentation later, right? So think about this one in terms of upper ontology, middle ontology. What kind of role this could be uh, for our group? Those are the top, we have been talking about, top down. Starting from the existing one, and think about how to further develop that. But this is so far, we have talked about this. And we talk about different approaches. <coughs> the next one, uh, we'll talk about that is working between existing things. No superhero. Everyone work together. Make that, all right? So this is the working between and among the existing ones. Uh, I would consider them as a bottom-up approach, and there are two major categories. One is integration and combination. To integrate or combine them, there are different options as well. The first one is the, the meta thesaurus as we'll talk about, and then the four differences. But uh, this is to combine existing things. Uh, everyone knows that uh, the National Library of Medicine has this meta thesaurus. That's the term they came up, meta thesaurus. Generally, if a concept does not appear in any of the source, will also not appear in my final. So it's completely combined from the many, how many of them? They combined already 150 existing Cisori, and including the most important ones that are used. It's just one of the project um, products in the UNLS. So how can you tell that? The differences. They are pioneer before the semantic web. They are pioneer using ID, identify. So if this is, called, this is a concept of our paddock, this is the ID. However, in different thesaurus, maybe they call differently. Maybe they have different uh, thing. I give each of them an ID. So when you refer, even though it's called paddock, but maybe in that one is different from this one. But this is the, what they have to do. A lot of work behind that. But they could do this because they have existing very high level standard. Um, so for clinics, they use theirs. For doctors after seeing you, they send um, make a code and then also get the insurance. Each of them have different vocabulary. None of them will sacrifice, say, I need to use yours, or I need to use yours, right? So no way to get superhero. That's why they combine together. Right? Um, for our question is, if we make that 
we have so many standards for every already. Do I consider? Basically, for example, about it is we all use ICD. Yeah. Do we have such agreement for major categories uh, have some particular core requirements? And also, if you make that, who is responsible? You see that each concept has to be connected and mapped and that. Who is responsible and the maintenance? Yeah, this is the more administrative and the workforce issue, I think. It's a really great approach, but you have to have that power to do that. Another very interesting thing is that, you see, why it's repeating? The same thing, right? This is because for the taxonomy, for example, for uh, animals or plants, later discovered that if it belongs to, it belong to different, uh, that this species belongs to differences. So the scientists have been making changes. And this particular one is very meaningful because it may tell you which version and which particular uh, that plant belong to, and also guide you directly to the bibliographical, um, how to say, evidence, one that was announced, one was uh, used. So no opinion that supervise others. Uh, this is a, uh, a very, how to say, <coughs> democratic way of Things. So, um, if you have a debate between different things about the same thing, this is the way of putting it together. So let's just say we discuss our own situation. I'm just putting example for our vocabulary, for book, paper, photographs. We have so many terminologies in here. So, if we make a meta vocabulary, we think about that. The example we have talked about. Who will be responsible? How can we do the mapping? So, another way of doing this is to just uh, interoperate at the same time and share and harmonize. So, there are three approaches that I uh, also categorized and uh, illustrated. So one of them is so-called the shared uh, scheme. The shared scheme is the <coughs> in the situation that if I have a database, I've used this vocabulary, this resource for 30 years, I don't want to <coughs> convert to something else, uh, especially my huge database. So this is the bridge, say, none of you need to sacrifice. I'm making a bridge to connect you. And who is doing that? This is the one project that the pioneer for the agriculture related. <coughs> so finally they get this. But you can see that at the beginning, from the agrivoc, uh, so many concepts, <coughs> each of them, and we only get 10,000 most used from databases that you can see they are most used in terms Then you put together. Only mapping those in order to have people find this and search four different databases, three different databases. And this now, it's available on the website and use this tool, maybe you also, the technology group, want to consider for the uh, open um, multilingual thesaurus tool. And you see, this is our bridge thesaurus. We we'll talk about particular plant, particular concept, and they tell you match to where, exactly what's matched to where. The way you search this ID, you can search other three major databases. Uh, each of them is a huge database. One of them is a commercial one. And that's the bridge. Our situation. Uh, 
we will talk about the example for painting objects, textiles we have so many of them. If they have been already used by a different one, they don't want to switch to something else, right? Nor can we have a bridge bridges. But again, this is also the situation of how to collaborate who will do the job. Um, then another way of interoperating is to have the reference ontology, which means we use that as a reference. We may not index our terms with them. We all agree with something. So they are not a bridge, they are not a super, they're just reference. And this situation is in the um, Anatomy, human anatomy, no matter which mission you are, you use that. So in our field, in our group, for example, we talk about the architecture, building, and those are the things. There's glossaries. Glossaries sometimes are just used for um, <coughs> not designed as a scissor structure, uh, upper or lower reference. Uh, uh, <coughs> see also or things like that. So we use make a reference ontology that people refer to something, agree, oh you mean this or you mean that. But that is another way to reuse all of them. So more questions for, for everyone. There could also be a virtual organization thinking. How would this work? Um, virtual organization is also under this big open data environment become possible. For example, this is a entry. You see whenever they mention flower, the flower definition is Y and then style definition comes from here. Lands come from here, the species come from here. Virtually uh, connected behind this each particular entry. Very interesting approach of this uh, technology versus for plant function, functional and diversity. Um, the final example is our familiar fatty vocabulary thing. You can see each of the vocabulary have the term, but many of us don't understand exactly what this drinking vessel looks like or where it's used, right? And which museum hosts them. So the virtual one just gave you the link to different museum objects. Um, it's maintained by outside. It's not maintained by your vocabulary. But that's a good approach that you rely and uh, connect other things together. Although you are still a control vocabulary, you're still a thesaurus. However, you have broad concepts together. I think in the conservation, we have a lot of visual glossary. We may consider using this way to connect uh, um, that explanation of the some processes in the situation with the, the virtual connection. So, brought so many different options to you and in some way this uh, we either start from an existing vocabulary, think about uh, derive something from there or expand. And another approach is if we have diverse and so many that have a long term long time already use that, it's not easy to force someone to re-index or convert everything. Then there could be options working between or among the existing vocabularies. So those are the uh, approaches and we need to think about the, uh, the necessary situation that we uh, want to deal with. So that's my uh, talk about this and We'll make the PowerPoint available, and you can also see the uh, material on the, <coughs> the website. Just
if you are interested in metathesaurus, you click on there. You can see all the information about that. So mm, that's my talk about any discussion. We can have <laughs> so many options. Or is anyone that is uh, uh, not clear, you can ask uh, to go back to them. Yes. I was curious what the difference is between the bridge option mm -hmm. and the super option. It seemed that the bridge one was just basically making a super one based on the information that we have. So what they were exactly the same approach, except one there's an existing super and the other we make a super. Okay. All right, both are super. <laughs> I'm just curious what, if there are other differences. Right. There, um, <clears throat> the current situation we have, uh, one is which you have a key as your base. Mm -hmm. So for the top situation we talk about, they have a base starting from that. They extend to the divide. So, so CDR is that model, and we match that. The, this part has a lot more, based on the current situation, everyone already indexed the database and used that. Then we use this way to put it together. In the bridge situation, uh, the two different, yeah, if you, that bridge itself becomes a super, but no one are forced to use them. You still, your database or your institution still do whatever you do. The connection is done by the bridge. Um, so that is the difference. Uh, and you maintain your vocabulary, you keep doing your things. I only maintain the connection with you. I'm not responsible for your updating, your changing things. <coughs> and the bridge can be done as a project based. Um, you make it one time, and then in the future, the updates will be speedy to maintain. But for the meta source, like the medical, the, the National Life of Medicine, that requires a lot of work. Anyone to change in their local vocabulary will matter to change. That's a, a, the administrative kind of uh, word, yes. Um, do you see, we see this sometimes where a museum will use uh, maybe pieces of the AAT to maintain standards and things like that. Um, and in effect, I think they're using a bridge approach, as I understand it. Do you see that bridge as being maintained by a single institution? Or is that a shared? shared. So if I have my, yeah, so shared. as as an example of what I'm sort of looking for, and I'm not sure how it fits in this. If I have a local thesaurus that I've built locally, I might be trying to follow standards, like I'm actually pulling things from the AAT and pulling things mm -hmm. from these vocabularies. But it's my local, it's my local authority. Right. So if I wanted to maintain, in a sense of which, between my local and whether it's, I sort of get that point of making the database my superhero, kind of, I, I see that. But if I want to maintain, in effect, mapping or a bridge, which of those approaches would that fall into, or is it too institution specific to get what you're talking about? I think it also depends on how many things you are involved. If you have more than three or four, it's become difficult to maintain that bridge. And also the size of the original. The, the one that we talk about, the bridge, was um, uh, based on three very large vocabulary, which are maintained by themselves. Because I think, I don't know if people agree with me, but I think compared to the scale of medicine, the vocabularies that we're bridging are pretty small. And we may be talking about extending the AAT and things like that, but in terms of that vast AAT, 
the set of terms used for conservation, it might be into the thousands. But we're, uh, in terms of, you know, maybe more, but in terms of um, volume of use, it's, it's probably even that small, and especially within a single institution. Um, the, we're not talking like medicine is a huge load everywhere. Fortunately, yeah. maybe we're talking about, a, in the scale of technology, a relatively small world, I think. Maybe we can discuss that later for the approach. Yeah. Yeah, for the, for the great one, I don't know this, the image didn't come up with the color. Uh, <coughs> so Aberbock have so many, and the CAB, this one is for commercial-based uh, uh, retrieval system, yeah. database and National Lab of Agriculture. Um, <coughs> we only take the top 10,000 concept to match. And in the medical one, it's any single thing exists in no matter what vocabulary. Some are small and some are foreign language. I make sure you are in my home, that's it. And that requires a whole team to work on that. And it's international, but no one else done that. So you go to Brazil, you can see people working with that and report whatever changes they made. They're collaborating a lot with each individual. And this three is uh, also based on a, the whole agriculture and environmental uh, consortium and they agree with this bridge thesaurus idea. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know the, 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 the current version is uh, still called the beta version, uh, but it's freely available, download, everyone can use that. Oh. Huge support behind that. That's, a, that's another issue, sustainability, and who is responsible for maintaining. If a, if a thesaurus is not updated in four months, it's kind of like a, you feel that it's already out. Um, that's also the issue um, in a lot of the data project. They came up, but they didn't update later. So our project needs to really thinking about the sustainability, the poster responsible. Okay, so bring your idea later for the discussion. So any, uh, any other things we can uh, see the about the type of resource that you're having to manage, the type of concepts that you're having to manage, and maybe taking off from your example of the biomedical domain, uh, yes, it's huge, <laughs> uh, and has a lot of money and resources to put into it. Um, a lot of the concepts that are in that domain and in those resources, I would characterize as being um, if not well-defined, at least uh, commonly used by a lot of people. They're relatively easy to say, uh, that's the ulna of your arm, okay, I know what that is. Most doctors know what that is. Is that also true for the concepts and resources that you're trying to manage in the curation community here? Um, or are they more individually understood and locally defined and the same words may mean different things? Well, all of, all of the above? Yes. That's what I would imagine. There are certain terms which are fairly common. Mm -hmm. So you will find exceptions to them. Yes. There are terms which are commonly ambiguous. Yes. So um, you've got certain terms that people have slightly different understandings of. Um, but it's not always obvious which are which. I mean, uh, 
getting back to the sustainability uh, question, Marcia, and I know we'll have time to discuss it later, but um, in the way you've uh, presented these different options, um, and from your experience, do you, do you have similar options for how to, uh, in terms of sustainability in relation to these things? Um, I think the <coughs> some of the options, if uh, there are good funding behind this, like a government, uh, I know in the biophoto, a lot of uh, government support for the project, they, they were able to, the National Cancer Institute has their own thesaurus and very well uh, maintained. And the back supporting is very critical, I see that. And, um, <clears throat> and also the agreement with this is very critical for people. I think the, maybe the gallery system would have to say that you already used the one, you don't want to convert everything to another one. So your uh, audience is another thing to consider how much impact to them. Um, so there is no real good uh, one solution. Uh, the as link data become more popular, people start to consider Wikidata as the authority file. As the authority file. So that's everyone contribute. Yeah. That's a new uh, approach we see the unconventional. No, no superhero there, but everyone contribute to the Wikidata. But that's not more for the authority names, places. For concept, it's still <laughs> very different. Do you have a notion of, I'm just sort of thinking of those really big uh, biomedical to use as the example, and that then there were obvious overlap between the three of them, and that overlap created the bridge. But what I was wondering is that given that all three of those are maintained anyway, what resources are required to maintain each of them, and whether it would have made more sense for one of them just to grow, and then to share the cost of that, and rather than creating a fourth one, which would then require additional resources to cover the fourth. So for a conservation area, the notion of creating for an, an additional well-supported vocabulary is just not really realistic because the resources aren't there. Um, so the option is really to find which existing one is best financed and see how they can expand to cope with the small additional things that they don't already cover. It's more realistic, I would have thought. Bring it on. <laughs> make a super <coughs> structure, that mapping quality is a big issue. You cannot just rely on machine to align things. And there are lots of exact <coughs> match or close match. Even I all define the same term or concept, maybe we have a different contextual information. So that the quality of that, uh, how this um, the integrated bridge or meta can do, uh, and how much human effort has to be there. The experts, really the experts have to be there. That is uh, also uh, something to consider. And also if you involve foreign languages, multilingual, the modern English, and multicultural, that is a huge thing to, to deal with. Yeah, sometimes for individual concepts or also debates or different things. Right? So it's uh, not an easy job, that's the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've just made a fresh pot of coffee for those of you who want to get up for a moment. I put it out there. There's cups, creamer, sugar. Yes.
yes, I see some eager smiles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, help yourselves, I can make a second pot if that runs out. 